Maybe you came here on vacation and you're looking for some things to do while you're here in the area, or maybe you just relocated here and uh, are still trying to find some things that you like to do. Well, if you're looking for more information about things to do here in St. Augustine, I'm gonna give you the top five things to do here in the area. And this is the video for you and we're gonna get right after it right now. What's up everyone, this is Thomas with Keller Williams here in St. Augustine, Florida. And if you're looking for everything you need to know about eating, working, sleeping, and the top five things to do here in St. Augustine, Florida, then this is the video for you. So tap that subscribe button below, like, and comment if you have any additional questions. If you need any further assistance, then please reach out to me directly. Shoot me a call, text, email, whatever that needs to be. I'm here for you. We have people reaching out all the time and I love to be able to help them out. So whatever that needs to be, call, text, or email, I'm here for you. Also, stay tuned for the end because I'm gonna go over a couple of things that didn't make the list. So I'm gonna call them my honorable mentions. Those are gonna be after the fifth thing I cover. The first thing on this list that I wanted to cover is going to be obviously the beach here in St. Augustine, Florida. We have a couple different beaches you can visit, a lot of them that you can either drive on or you can find public parking for in the area. Uh, public parking is going to be a little tough at certain times, especially during the uh, uh, peak seasons of uh, summer, <laughs> of course. Um, but for the most part, if you're looking for parking, you should be able to find it. There are sections where you can drive onto the beach two wheel drive. It's a $10 fee for the day if you're looking for a daily pass. Uh, if you live here in the area, then you could also get a annual pass, which is $50 for the entire year. So you'll save significant amount of money if you are an active beach goer. Or maybe you live on St. Augustine Beach and you can commute right over there. Uh, but of course you can, you can surf on the beach, you can go swimming out there in the ocean if you'd like. There are some sharks there though, of course, uh, so I, I wouldn't go too deep. Um, you know, if you wanted to lay out and get a tan, you can do that. See a lot of people walking their dogs and, and riding their bikes on the beach. Um, I see people flying kites and you know when a lot of people do and, and what a lot of my friends do is when they go and have a beach day is uh, they'll make a whole entire day out of it. So they're staying there the entire day. They're going to bring a canopy, maybe one or two of them. They're going to bring a blanket to stretch out. They're going to bring pl plenty of chairs, you know, maybe some corn haul or some disc jam, whichever your poison is. Uh, and then, you know, there's some people are going to bring a grill as well. Uh, so I see people bring catered food to the, the beach. I've seen people bring, of course, prepared like sandwiches, but I've also seen the opposite of that too, where someone will bring an entire grill. I've seen someone bring a smoker to the beach. So as long as you're not having an open flame, you're totally allowed to do both of those things. The beach is open from dawn till dusk. Uh, you'll see people out there still walking at night as well, you know, and there are some patrols that'll be like, hey, you know, it's getting a little late, it's time to get off. But, you know, here and there, you'll catch people walking around. Um, of course, you can catch the sunset there, sunset. Pfft. Uh, you catch the sunrise over there on the beach. Uh, that's how the, the coasts work. Uh, so um, you get up real early and go out there and uh, catch it before the sunrise comes up, take a walk, it's very beautiful. And right around St. Augustine Beach there, uh, you know, they have plenty of restaurants that you can either, you know, when you're done on the beach, you can walk right over there. Uh, if you want to do some mini golf, they have Fiesta Falls mini golf, which I believe is one of the best in the world in terms of mini golf. If you're really into that, they have some great golfing down there. The second thing I wanted to cover on this list is going to be the St. Augustine Alligator Farm. Uh, I've been there many a times. I used to go to elementary school right across the street at Arby Hunt. And actually when I was a kid, I did a media program where they sent us over to the alligator farm for educational purposes. And we were supposed to film what we learned. And uh, they ended up putting like a huge python on my neck. And I'm sitting there maybe like, I don't know, 10 years old. And I have this huge python on my neck and just frozen, frozen solid with this thing. And like, yeah, this is a snake and it's great and all this stuff, but either way. The alligator farm is open from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Uh, the charge for adults is gonna be around $28. Maybe there's some tax in there, I'm not figuring. And uh, for kids under 12, it's going to be $17. They do also have additional things if you wanted to add on to it. I know they have a behind the scenes where you can go with the, one of the, uh, the workers there and they'll take you to the, uh, you know, to the baby crocodile section where you can, or baby alligator, my mistake. They do have crocodiles there as well. 
Um, you can you know, hold a little baby alligator. And there's also uh, the Maximo exhibit where you can go and see this like 16 foot alligator be fed and go to this private tank there. So there are other options if you want to get deeper into the experience there. But uh, for the most part, just the general admission is 28 for adults and then 16 for anyone or 17 under kids under 16. They not only have alligators at the alligator farm, but they also have crocodiles. They have a variety of reptiles and snakes. They also have a, a bird rookery that's in there. So they have a variety of different birds there too. They're actually hosting a great event. It's called Croctoberfest. Apparently it's the fourth time they've done it. I want to go this year, but it's uh, it's in October and uh, it's a craft beer festival within the alligator farm. They're going to have live music. They're going to have food from local restaurants. They're, of course, going to have some craft beers. Uh, and then you also learn a little bit about the conservatorship here in St. Augustine and what, what efforts they're putting forward in the conservation here in our area. If you are an adrenaline junkie, if you uh, are looking for a sense of adventure while you're here in St. Augustine, this might be the thing for you to go to too. They also have a section where you can zip line over alligators throughout the entire farm. Uh, so for me, I'm gonna take a hard pass on that, but maybe that's something you're interested in. So you can definitely do that over there. They have, a, um, I think, a, a 60 minute course and a 90 minute course that you can choose to do. So if you like to zip line over dangerous dinosaurs, then this is definitely the, the thing you wanna do here in St. Augustine. The third thing I wanted to talk about on our list here is going to be the St. Augustine Lighthouse. Now that's open from 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. every day. They do have tours that are outside of that. So if you are looking to do that, you can schedule them, uh, but that's a, a, so a different cost associated with that specific tour because they have more than one. The price for admission is going to be $15 for an adult and it's gonna be $12 for a child or a senior. Now myself personally, I went ahead and I bought the Lighthouse membership. I actually got engaged up there. So uh, I bought the Lighthouse membership. It's good for a year and uh, it's $25 plus you also get a guest to bring with you too. So I can go anytime during the year and just walk the Lighthouse, walk up the steps and, and go check out the, the historical landing there. The Lighthouse was built between 1871 and 1874. It's approximately 165 feet tall and there's 219 steps going in a spiral up to the very top of the lighthouse. Now there are certain landings where there are rest areas for people to sit down. Uh, it's a one way kind of stairway. So you do have to wait for people to come up and come down and wait your turn. Uh, but there are landings that you can take breaks. One specific note about climbing the lighthouse, if you are coming with a family with younger children, um, anyone under 44 inches will not be able to climb the lighthouse. They do have other activity, historical activities. They have a, a children's uh, play area as well. They also have a puppet theater as well for them. So there's other things for kids to do there. The lighthouse isn't the only interesting thing, a part of the, you know, the lighthouse grouping that I'm putting in here. They also have the, uh, the lighthouse keeper's house there, which they have an interactive tour that you can touch on the wall and it will explain certain things to you uh, about life uh, living there as a, as a lighthouse keeper. There are actually three different families that took care of the lighthouse uh, at the same time. So it's a huge house that has an interactive tour with a whole bunch of different historical artifacts walking through it. Um, if you if you want as well, you can go into the lighthouse and uh, you can do a ghost tour if you wanted to. You can uh, there there is actually one ghost tour that specifically will go up there at night, and it's the only tour that will go up there at night. Uh, there's also well at least in terms of the ghost tours, there's also a ghost tour of just the premise alone where they'll stand and tell you ghost stories as they walk you through, uh, and there's also a a kind of sunset romantic one where they'll they'll do a you know, some uh, hors d'oeuvres and champagne at the top of the lighthouse for you as well. Interesting fact that they will tell you when you go through the lighthouse is that uh, one of the kids of one of the lighthouse keepers families actually took their family cat and threw him off of the lighthouse with a little parachute. The cat survived, the kid survived too. Uh, so everything was good, but a little interesting fact. They will tell you there, they have a little painting of it inside the lighthouse itself. Guys, if you are getting value from this content, please do me that solid. Subscribe below, like the video, and if you have any additional questions I might be able to answer, anything you might be looking to do here in the area, just leave me a comment below and I'll get right back to you. The fourth thing on our list of top five things to do here in St. Augustine is gonna be Castillo de San Marcos. 
Now, this is the fort here in downtown St. Augustine. It borders the waterfront and also the downtown section there. Um, you can get in there from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. And admission is $15 for adults, and that's good for an entire week. So once you buy that ticket, you can use that for a, a seven days after. And kids under 15 are completely free to go in. So that's one of the great benefits of this little fort down here. Uh, it's also right down downtown St. Augustine, so you can walk on the waterfront there. You can go check out the marina, all the boats in the harbor. If you wanted to go downtown, maybe go down to Kilwins, get a little bit of ice cream, a little bit of fudge. Or if you're not into that, you want to get a little bit of wine and dining, you can go down right down to St. George Street and find something down there. You can do your own self-guided tour throughout the fort. They do have park rangers stationed within the fort. If you have any questions, they are knowledgeable and they will give you all the information they have. Sometimes you might get lucky and also run into a volunteer and a volunteer that is in their historical timepiece. Uh, they'll tell you everything they know about it. They also do historical reenactments there. And also once in a while, they will fire off a cannonball from there, uh, from a cannon that was built in the 1740s, I think, or 1720s, one of those. Uh, but I think that's really cool and really exciting. As of right now, because of COVID, they have kind of put the kibosh on a lot of those things, but they are planning to do more and more things here in the future. The fifth and final things on the top five things to do here in St. Augustine is going to be my personal favorite, which is the St. Augustine Amphitheater. It is a 4,000 person venue here located on St. Augustine Beach. It borders uh, Anastasia State Park. And aside from that, they also host a whole bunch of different things aside from music. They also do farmers markets, they, they do festivals, um, they also do private events there as well. For our local real estate office here at Keller Williams, we actually just recently had our, our annual party there. And uh, they hung up strong lights and they, they catered food and uh, they also got us some nice alcoholic beverages too. And we hung out there right outside from the amphitheater and uh, had a great night. Now the amphitheater, the prices are just going to depend on what person you're seeing there. You know, they have cinema nights there um, as well as music acts. Uh, they also have festivals too. So it really just depends on what you're going for. I just looked up the prices for John Legend. He's coming in, I think, uh, October. And uh, his prices are starting at $74 for the very back. And then if you want to do like a meet and greet and a VIP experience with John Legend, then that's going to cost you about $500. And then you're literally going to be able to be like sweat on from him, from the, uh, the venue space from where you're sitting. So if you're into that, that's definitely an option for you if you wanted to go that route. But uh, it all just depends on your, who you're looking to go for and see. The Sing Out Loud Festival they have every single year. Uh, that's actually a free festival for the people here in the community. Uh, they, ho they host food trucks and a whole bunch of different live bands throughout the week. And uh, it's a great little time to go down to just hang out there. It's, once again, it's free. So why not go down there and check it out? Guys, and that rounds out our top five things to do here in St. Augustine. And if you made it to the end of this video, you're lucky because I got a couple of honorable mentions for you that didn't make the list, but still, I think they're great here in the area. The first thing on the honorable mentions is going to be Ripley's Believe It or Not. That's in downtown St. Augustine too. But if you like seeing some funky things, if you were a fan of the TV show, that's actually the location where they filmed the outside of it. And on top of that, they have a whole bunch of weird things in there. It's Ripley's Believe It or Not. You can go in and see a two-headed goat in there if you wanted to. The second thing on the honorable mention list is going to be Escape You. Uh, this is actually my, my sister and my brother-in-law's company that they own here in town. But if you're in town, you're on vacation, or if you actually live here and you're looking to do like a team building or a family event, this is great for people to go and do. Uh, I was actually, you know, kind of opposed to it. I'm like, yeah, it's puzzles and games. Like I can do that at home, but they, they've made such an elaborate setup over there and they relate it to the history of St. Augustine. So if you're, if you're a history buff or if you're, you've already done the tours down there, it actually blends into that really great. The third thing on the honorable mentions is going to be doing a water tour here in St. Augustine. Uh, you can do a booze cruise, you can do a historical tour. Uh, if you wanted to check out a sailboat, you can do sailing lessons or you can just ride on there and do a booze cruise if you wanted to. Uh, so that's definitely something that you gotta check out if you're here. The fourth thing on the honorable mentions is going to be taking a carriage ride through downtown St. Augustine. Now, I can't remember the price on it, but I wanna say it was like $100 to take a, a carriage ride around there. And uh, it was me, my sister, and my mother. 
and uh, me being a kid I wanted to sit in the very front so I got the full tour but I also got the full view of the horse taking a dump into a back so wouldn't recommend sitting in the front, sit in the back, uh, don't be pushy. Guys, this has been the top five things to do in St. Augustine. Thank you so much for watching, I appreciate it. Maybe I put something on your radar that you weren't possibly thinking about doing before. Hope you had a little bit of fun with the suggestions that I had. Please do me that solid. Subscribe, like the video. If you have any additional questions about things to do here in the area, go ahead and leave me a comment below. I'll get right back to you. We have people reaching out all the time so it's not a bother at all whatever it is call text email i'm here for you 